Good morning and welcome to the service with a difference. It is the 4th of July 2021, sixth Sunday after Pentecost, and we are journeying with Jesus as he teaches his disciples what it's like to build up the kingdom of God, the body of Christ. And today we are looking at how there is a purpose to everything that Christ calls us to do. And, and not only is there a purpose, but he empowers us to do that. Today we are reading from Psalm 123, one of the Psalms of Ascents, the songs that they would sing as they head towards the temple. And so again, everything is about looking up because they are looking up to the mountain where the temple is. I lift my eyes to the hills. I look up. All looking up is about looking to the temple because God's presence was meant to be there. And so the psalmist is, is saying, Lord God, as, as a servant looks to their master for everything, as a maidservant looks to their mistress for everything that they need, we, we look to you and we need in this moment your mercy. We need in this moment for you to be present with us. We are reading from Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 to verse 5. It is still a part of the, the story of, of Ezekiel's call. God, God tells Ezekiel to stand up. He, he fills him with his spirit so that he can stand up because obviously Ezekiel is lying flat. Um, and he says to him, I'm sending you to a people who, who are not going to listen to you, to a people who are stubborn. Um, really encouraging words for Ezekiel. And then we're going to be reading from Mark chapter 6. We're going to read from verse 1 to verse 13. Um, after teaching about the kingdom of God and showing the disciples what the kingdom of God looks like by casting out the demons and by healing the sick, um, the woman who's been bleeding for 12 years, raising the dead, um, he goes home with his disciples and he is teaching and performing miracles there. And then they recognize him and they say, isn't this Jesus, the carpenter, Mary's son, you know, the brother of his brothers and his sisters. Um, and so they no longer want to listen to him because why should he have the message? And they don't. And then Jesus sends out his disciples and he tells them to be ready to go at the drop of a hat. This is what you must wear. This is what you must take with you. And just be ready because there's a possibility that you will be rejected. And so I'm going to ask that you put this on pause as you read through those readings. And as we read them, we give God thanks for them and we pray that he bless them to us as we reflect on them in this moment. You know, some of the some of the things that we are asked to do, I think, can often seem pointless, um, especially when you are younger. You know, why do something, we think, if it serves no purpose? And and I remember high in the army, you know, they would they would make us run and drill for hours on end and and it seemed like for no reason at all. And so just everybody was irritated because of what they were making us do. But after a few months of despising the pointless exercises we, we did, we, we discovered how much stronger we were, how much fitter we were, and how we were able to work together as a unit. We had all come from different places, sucked together into, 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 into one unit, and obviously couldn't, when we, in the beginning, we couldn't do anything together. And after a few months, we, we realized that we were doing stuff together, which was which would have been impossible when we first came together. You know, sometimes the things that we do in life that seem to have no point often turn out to be the foundations upon which the greatest achievements of our lives are, are built. Um, parents and teachers and trainers, they, they all make those in their care do, do pointless stuff because they know what that pointless stuff they are doing is building up to and they know what the purpose is for, for doing it. Um, you know, when you were in primary school and they, and they made you do your times tables over and over and over and you couldn't understand why they were making you do all this stuff. It was just so boring and it was such a waste of time, you know, until you started applying maths and until you started doing maths and realized that that stuff is the foundation upon which you are able to do everything else. It is that stuff that is the foundation for, for sending people to the moon. Um, and sometimes, you know, we just need to do the pointless stuff until we understand the purpose for the stuff that we are doing. Now, in the reading from Mark today, Jesus has just experienced rejection to his to his own message, um, and it's in his hometown. and And so he sends his disciples out, and he and he tells them to proclaim the kingdom of God, um, and to show by signs and wonders and miracles that the kingdom of God is is already here and what the kingdom of God looks like. But he warns them. He says, you know, there is the possibility that 
your message will, will be rejected. Um, and in Ezekiel, God, as we said earlier, is sending Ezekiel to a people that he says are probably not going to listen to him. He says they, they're stubborn, they're hard-headed. Um, you know, and so even though the people Jesus is sending his disciples to and God is sending Ezekiel to, even though they are going to hear the message, even though they're going to see the message because they are all practical, um, they, they, there is, they might still not believe the message. So then the question comes, why did God then need to send Ezekiel to the people of Israel if they weren't going to hear the message anyway? Why did Jesus need to send his disciples out to proclaim the gospel if, if the people they are going to go proclaim the gospel to are not going to hear the message anyway? You know, why did they need to proclaim God's peace with, with humanity if, if the people they were proclaiming the message to were, were not going to listen? You know, was there a purpose? And if there, a, there was a purpose, what, what was the purpose? And, and well, obviously, there is a purpose. Um, you know, they needed to go and tell the world about God's peace with them, because if they don't, then how will those who have not heard the word hear the word? And how will those who have, who have turned away from the word know that they have lost that direction and be given an opportunity to repent? Um, how will those who have grown cold to, to the radiance of the word once again, once again hunger for the warmth of the love of God? As many believers are doing now, um, so many of the Israelites in Ezekiel's day and in again in Jesus' day, they've forgotten the joy of union with God. And they're addicted to this and they are blinded to the purity of, of God's intentions for them. And they are so deeply invested in their foolishness that their hearts have hardened towards God. Um, they're not listening to God's word out of their own. Um, they have turned away from God. And if God were to give up on them, then there would be no hope at all. But, but God, God cannot give up because God is unable to give up. You know, besides the testimony after testimony that are presented to us through, throughout the Old Testament of God's inability to give up, the whole, the whole Jesus event spells it out very slowly and very clearly for us because we are slow to understand. And it spells it out for us that God cannot give up. On us. God will not give up on us. As imperfect as all parents are, even, even if a good parent is unable to watch their child throw, throw their lives away by chasing after soul-destroying relationships with people or with objects, substance abuse, addictions, whatever other folly there is, if, if, if a good parent is unable to watch their child throw their life away um, without doing everything that they can to intervene, how much more seriously does a perfect God care about his creation turning towards him and, and listening to him because in him is his fullness of life? And that's the purpose behind God sending Ezekiel. That's God's purpose behind sending all of the other prophets. You know, that's the purpose behind Jesus sending, sending the disciples. This is, this, this is the purpose behind Jesus sending every single one of us. It is because God knows that there is something better than what you have. And, and the things that you are chasing after lead you towards death. And so God is always sending someone. And at this moment, he is sending you and he is sending me. Because there is always somebody who is not, not listening to God's leading. There is always somebody who is not listening to God's offer of peace. There is always somebody who is so invested in their folly that, that their hearts have hardened towards God. And so there is a purpose to our sending. And in order to help us help God with what God is doing, God empowers us. God calls Ezekiel to stand up because he's, he's flat. He's, he's lying on the ground. He's in the presence of God. You can't stand. And so the Holy Spirit fills him and, and brings him to his feet. And then God gives him the words that he is going to speak. And that's consistent with God's call throughout Scripture. There's the calling. And then there is the empowerment to, to fulfill the calling. Jesus has empowered the disciples before he sends them out. You know, they have sat at his feet while he has taught them about God's kingdom and the stuff that happens there. And he has, he has demonstrated the kingdom by the healings and the casting out of the demons, by raising the dead, because, because God doesn't delight in illness or in evil or in, or in, or in death. And so, and so they have been taught. And they are empowered by the Holy Spirit now to go and do likewise. They have been called. And they have been empowered to fulfill the call. 
And part of the empowering process that we find standing out for us in both of these readings is that God helps us not to take rejection personally. And he surrounds us with others who, who will remind us to, to do the same. Um, God gives Ezekiel a heads up that he is being sent to a stubborn people. You know, they've revolted and they are still revolting. Um, you can read Jeremiah just for another version of, of what is taking place in Jerusalem at the time. Um, and, and that's consistent, obviously, with the work of a prophet when speaking to the people of God. Because if you are preaching repentance, there are many who, who will reject us, in, including ourselves. Because repentance is not an easy message to receive. Because if I'm calling you to repentance, I'm telling you that there is something in your life that, that is destroying relationships. There is something in your life that, that is not holy, that is not of God. And so it calls you to, to inspect what is going on within you and within your life. And this, this explains why it will seem to Ezekiel that his ministry is unsuccessful. Because the people of God are not listening, just like they didn't listen to any of the other prophets. You know, if, if they weren't stubborn, God wouldn't need to send Ezekiel. If the people today were not resistant to receiving God's invitation of peace, God wouldn't need to, to send you and me. Jesus himself is rejected. And so he gives the disciples the heads up. He says, you may not be received well. Just know that when you take the gospel, not everybody wants to hear the gospel because the gospel challenges us to, to the way we are living our lives. The gospel challenges us to the core. And so if you are not received, just shake the dust from your feet. Don't take the rejection with you because just like the dust is not yours, so the rejection is not yours. And so what I want you to do, he says to them, is I want you to go two by two so that you can continue to encourage each other in those moments when, when that happens. And also so that you can hold each other accountable when you are well received or if you are not well received. John Wesley speaks about his understanding of his purpose and those who have have come to to faith in 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 the Wesleyan what came to be known as the Wesleyan church he says to them we have no other purpose in this world than than to save souls that's all we have to do and in 1 Peter 3 Peter says to to the, his community I'm reading from verse 15 to verse 16 he says but in your hearts set apart Christ as Lord Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give you the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness. Do this with respect. Keep a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. And so whether this calling is easy to fulfill or difficult to fulfill for us, our uh, our purpose is to announce that in Christ, God has made peace with us and he has opened up the kingdom of God for, for all people. And in, and in order to fulfill this purpose, God empowers us. And, and we don't always know how he empowers us or what empowerment looks like. You know, years of being a mother is a ministry in itself. But it could also be the training that is needed to, to run an orphanage. It could also be the training that is needed to run a church. It could also be the training that is needed to, to run a country because we need somebody who is going to help everybody else clean up the mess that they have made. And so if we do everything as if we are doing it for God, God will use everything we are doing for the sake of his kingdom, even, even our mistakes, even our errors, all of that is a part of the process of God empowering us in order to serve and help him in what he is doing in, in his kingdom. And so remain at the feet of God. Remain there as you rely on the strength of the Holy Spirit, as you rely on the love of Christ to, to be a part of the work that God is doing. Be ready to share the gospel at every single moment. And that's the advice that Paul gives to Timothy. In 2 Timothy 4 verse 1 to 2, we read from there, In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and with careful instruction. And so here, hear the word of God to us today. Preach the word in season, out of season. Correct, rebuke, encourage. People need to know that God has made peace with them, whether they care or not. People need to know that there is something more to this life than than what we have learned and discovered from, from the way of this world. 
people need to know that in God there is fullness of life. And that is fullness of life for all people. Let's pray. And so, Lord God, as we recognize that we have no other purpose than to save souls, we sometimes, Lord God, think it is something that is so far beyond us. But as you sent your disciples out, they, they were just doing what they had been doing for a while already. When you send us out, Lord God, it is into our situation. It is into our communities. It is into our families. When you send us out, Lord God, we know that we will be doing what we have been doing all along, but we will be doing it for you. And by doing that, we are proclaiming your word, Lord God. Give us the courage to speak up about you and about your love, this love that has renewed and restored life in many different ways and in many different places, Lord God, throughout history throughout this moment today. Hear us as we pray this in your precious, precious name. Amen.